Fine, fine. Fine, thank you. I'm I'm in in my in my house. I I watch watch TV and and only stay at, at home. Very good. So you you didn't go out? Sorry? Didn't you go out? Uh, no, no. I I'm I'm go going only in my house. I because I, I stay I, I stay, stay at home. I stay at home. I stay at home. Okay. Did you watch any good movie? Uh, no, only series, series. In, in Netflix. Very good. What what series did you see? Uh, I I know not remember the, the name. Okay, okay. Is it action, horror, police, uh, love, love so love stories? No, it's como it's dry, thriller. Ah, a thriller really? Uh -huh. Okay. It's okay, okay. It's what is uh, Miami your favorite your favorite series? Um, uh, um, but, um, I don't know now. No, I don't. I don't have a favorite series now. Maybe, for example, uh, did you see Squid Game? Yes, Squid Game. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. 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 Did, you, did you like it? Sí, yes, yes, yes. Excellent, yes. excellent, very good, very good. Okay, what about my dear friend Alex? How are you, can Alex? I think fine. I used fine. to be at home too. Okay, okay, okay. Didn't you go out? No. No? Okay. What um what do you do? Did you watch any movies? Did you watch any series? Maybe you can say I was reading. Uh I watched the soccer games. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Um some anime. Okay. Arely? Yeah. Do you like um, anime? Yes, I like. Uh, Alex, I have a question for you, Alex. I have a friend, uh, a close friend, and he says that the first anime, that, well, that maybe one of the first anime, was Mass in Your Seat. Did you ever see, did you ever see Mass in Your Seat? Uh, can you repeat me again? I yes. think I have network issues. I yes. didn't did, hear you. Did you ever see Mass in Your Seat? Mass in Your Seat? Yes. Uh, maybe in the past, but uh, yes. recently, no. Exactly, in the past. Okay. Alex, yes. is, is that cartoon uh, an anime? Yeah. Yes, okay. I, I can consider it. Okay, okay. Yeah, because I have a friend, and this friend told me that uh, Massinger Seat is one of the oldest, is one of the oldest uh, animes. Yeah, it's maybe similar like uh, Dragon Ball. Exactly, 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 yeah. exactly. Or Naruto, no? Yeah, Naruto. Uh, I don't know if you know uh, One Piece. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Very good. Maybe. What? Another. Uh, bleach. It's all too. Exactly. Exactly. That's all yeah. one. Yes. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Okay. Okay, my friends. Today, in the meantime, that this is Jose arrives. Okay. I'm going to. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Wait a minute. Today, topics that we are going to see with me. Okay. This topic is called in English, it's called idioms. Remember, in Spanish, idioms no es idiomas, okay? Idioms are, what is the definition for idioms? They are phrases, okay? Usually they are long phrases with a hidden meaning, okay? Long phrases with a hidden meaning. For example, for example, so spoil the apple cart. Spoil the apple cart. Idioms, my friends, is, uh, is usually a difficult topic in English. Why? Because may maybe you know the meaning. You know the meaning of a spoil, the meaning of the or the, the meaning of apple, and the meaning of cart. However, all together, all together, Maybe it doesn't have any sense, okay? That's why 
That's why this topic is uh, something difficult. And we have general English idioms and we have business idioms. For example, Benjamin, what do you think, Benjamin, is the meaning of spoil the apple cart? How do you say that in, in Spanish, Benjamin? Spoil the apple cart. Spoil the apple cart. What do you think is the meaning in Spanish? How will, will we say this idiom in, in Spanish, Benjamin? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, I don't know. <laughs> no? Okay. No, no, don't worry. Don't understand. Don't. Very good. Don't worry. What about Alex? What do you think, Alex, is the meaning for a spoiled apple cart? Uh, it's como romper el carrito de manzanas. Maybe, maybe. Maybe, look, we'll say, spoil, spoil is echar a perder. Okay? Or, or, maybe you can say, for example, let's say the apple, let's say the apple is spoiled. La manzana está echada a perder. Or you can say, for example, uh, you can say the, the banana, let's say the banana, the banana is spoiled. La, 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 el plátano se, se va a perder. However, you can also use it for people. For example, for example, you can say, for example, you can say, my brother, my brother is a spoiled boy. My brother is a spoiled boy. It means in Spanish que, que mi hermano es un niño consentido. So look, you have two meanings, okay? One is echado a perder for, for food, okay? Echado a perder, descompuesto. But for spoiled, for people, isn't consentido. Yes, it's, it's a person who always gets what he or she wants, okay? Good morning, Alicia. How are you, Alicia? Fine? Good morning. Yes, fine. Welcome, Alicia. Alicia, please tell us, Alicia, how was your weekend? Um, uh, I visit, uh, Aminalco. Aminalco, okay. Where is that? Yeah. I don't know if it's stayed, stayed in near Mexico City or near Michoacán, I don't know. It's near to Querétaro. And it's near, look, you, you can say, uh, Alicia, you can say. Okay, but okay. it's near, look, it's near, it's near Querétaro. It's near Querétaro. Ah, Okay. I don't know what that place is. Is it a beautiful place? Yes, it's beautiful. Very good. Is, 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 it, a, is it a magical town, Alice? Is uh, a Minalco, is a Minalco, look, a magical uh, town? Ah, uh, yes. Ah, okay. Yes, okay, yeah. okay. Okay, Alice, and what did you eat there? Did you, do they have, do they have any special food? Uh, I see. See in the uh, I don't know uh, marker the central marker uh -huh. uh, uh, by uh, carnitas. Ah, okay, were they good? Yeah. <laughs> Excellent, Alice. Very good. Welcome, Alice. Very good. Okay, I got it. So, Alice, today with Benjamin and Alex, uh, Alex, we were checking this topic. This topic is called idioms. Okay. I was telling them that, remember, idioms in Spanish is not idiomas, okay? Idioms, the meaning is long phrases with a hidden meaning, remember, hidden, oculto. For example, this example, spoil the apple cart, okay? What do you imagine, Alice? How would you translate, Alice, this in Spanish? Spoil the apple cart, Alice. Mm. How do you say, Alice, in, in, in Spanish? Spoil the apple cart. Cart. Yes. Uh, when the people say uh, the information uh, okay. before uh, to uh, now the the product. Maybe exactly, exactly. Maybe you're you're close. You're close. Remember, 
I was telling, the, telling them, Benjamin and Alex and Alicia, that we have two types of idioms, okay? Business idioms and general idioms, okay? Remember, spoil the apple cart is similar to what Alice said, okay? In Spanish, we say spoil the apple cart, echarlo todo a perder. Spoil the apple cart, okay? Echarlo todo a perder. Look at this one. Look at another one. Look at this one. It's, uh, look at this. It's raining cats and dogs. What do you think is, is the meaning, Benjamin, for it's raining cats and dogs? Again? What do you mean, that? Mm -hmm. Exactly, that, that is the literal translation, okay? Exactly, okay. But in Spanish, we, we don't say that, Benjamin, no? We, we never say, Está lloviendo un gato de perro, no? The meaning is, it's raining, look at this. It's raining really hard. Okay. Literally, in Spanish, se está cayendo el cielo. Okay, it's raining cats and dogs. Yes. Okay, I have another one. Look at this. This one is for Alex. Alex, what do you imagine, Alex, is the meaning for this one? Okay, look at this. Hit the pocket. What do you imagine, Alex, is, is the meaning for kick the pocket? Golpear el balde. Exactly. Exactly. That is the, the literal translation. No? Kick, patear, golpear, okay? Kick the pocket, Gol patear la cubeta, voltear la cubeta, golpear la cubeta. But the meaning is to die. However, this one, my friends, is very informal, okay? You can say, for example, you can say, my brother, I will kick the pocket last week. However, remember, kick the pocket is very important. How, how do you say this? That, I mean, it's my hermano murió. Okay. Or well, literally, kick the pocket is colgar los tenis. Okay. How do you say this in more formal? You can say, for example, my brother, my brother passed away last week. Yes, only yes, my brother passed away last week. Yes, mi hermano falleció o murió la semana pasada. Okay. So remember, kick the bucket. I mean, is the meaning in English is die. In Spanish, is colgar los tenis. Okay. The next is for Alice. Alice, how do you say Alice? This one, Alex. This one, Alex. A hard cookie. How would you say, Alice, this a hard cookie in Spanish, Alice? Uh, cocinar fuerte. Cocinar fuerte, maybe, maybe. Remember, cookie, cookie, galleta, okay? Hard, dura. Literally, in Spanish, we say, una galleta dura. But, but um, in, in English, okay, the meaning in English is, this one, okay, look at this. A uh, determined person. For example, for example, you can say, you can say Mario is a hard cookie in his goals. And Mario is a hard cookie in his goals. It means that Mario is a determined person in his goals. Okay. Hello, Jose. Good morning, Jose. How are you, Jose? Hi, sir. Good morning. How are you? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, of course, yes. Welcome. Okay, I'm fine. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, because I was, in the meantime, because I was checking with the students, okay, this topic, okay, it's called idioms, okay. So okay. we're checking some general, general idioms. I told them that we have general English and we have for business English, okay. Very good, Jose. Okay. Okay, okay Very excellent. Good. Excellent. Okay. okay, I'm going to give the control to teacher Jose, okay. And when the session closes, Jose, don't worry, okay, you, you tell me. I will have it again, okay? Okay, I'll let you know, teacher. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, good morning, guys. Uh, good morning, Benjamin, Alejandro, and Alicia. How are you today? Good morning, Jose. Hi. Thank you. Hi. Good morning. Okay. I'm glad that you're fine today. Okay, so let's continue. I'm going to start sharing my screen. So give me a moment.
Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay, excellent. Okay. Okay, guys, so today's topic is all getting ready. And today is Tuesday at 17 March, May, sorry, 2022. And we're gonna continue. Okay, do you remember what we learned in our previous lesson? Do you remember the topic that we learned? Can anyone tell me? Benjamin, do you remember what we learned in our previous lesson? Mm, I know, I don't. Sorry, I, I don't remember the, the last the last class. Okay, Alicia, do you remember something? Uh, uh, I think uh, we talk about uh, teenagers. Okay, we talk about teenagers. Okay, but we were also talking about uh, places within a city. Do you remember? And uh, we were talking about about your neighborhood and all the places oh, yeah. you can find there. Do you remember? Yes, yes. Okay, so today's topic is somehow similar to the previous one, but in this case, it's about uh, tourism. Okay. And um, what we are going to learn today um, in this topic, getting ready, we're going to learn how to talk about getting ready for a trip using infinitives to give reasons, okay? Infinitives to give reasons. Have you ever heard about this topic, infinitives to give reasons? Alejandro, have you ever heard about this topic before? Uh, I don't remember. Maybe yes. Okay, okay. Getting ready uh, for a trip using infinitives to give reasons. Okay, then we're gonna check um, how to give opinions using the following structure. It's plus adjective plus two, okay? And first we have this question. Uh, what do you usually do when you need to give reasons to someone else? What do you usually do uh, to, when you need to give reasons to someone else? Okay, uh, Mehamim, can you help me answering this question, please? Uh, what do you usually do when you need to give Reason to comments, um, and maybe I I I make more questions for for this person. Okay, ask more questions to this person. Okay, what else do you do? Mm, maybe why <laughs> or or what is what what is the detail about this? Okay, what are the details for this? Okay, excellent, Mohamed. Thank you. And Alicia, what do you usually do when you need to give reasons to someone else? Um, um, I try to explain uh, my situation. Um, verify that the other person uh, tried to uh, know me. And I, I don't know, uh, how do you say entenderme? Understood me. Ah, understood me. Understand me, sorry. Let me write. <laughs> Understand me? Understand yeah. me? Yes. Okay. Understand me. Thank you so much, Alicia. And finally, Alejandro. What do you usually do when you need to give reasons to someone else? I think the same that Alice try to explain to the other person the, the reasons. Okay, try to explain the other person the reasons. Okay, 
Thank you, Alejandro and Alicia. Okay, so then we have this question. Have you heard about giving opinions using the structure it's plus adjective plus two? Okay, it's a structure that we are going to learn today and how to use it to give opinions about something. Okay, do you know this structure? Or have you ever seen it before? For example, uh, let me write in chat uh, an example about this. Okay, here we have uh, this example. It's easy to learn English. As you can see, we start writing it's, and then the adjective in this case, what is the adjective in this sentence? Can anyone tell me? Easy. Okay, excellent, easy. It's easy, then we have to, to learn English. It's easy to learn English, okay? Here we, have, we are giving an opinion about learning English. And we are saying that learning English is easy, okay? So we can say it's easy to learn English. Okay, can you give me other examples um, similar to this one? A week. Okay, sorry, can you repeat it please? A week. Big. Okay. Well, can you uh, make a sentence similar to this one? Okay. The, the dog is, is a, it's a big dog. Okay. The dog is a big dog. Okay. Well, we can, well, we need to use the structure. It's adjective and two. Can you formulate a sentence similar with this structure? Oh, yes. We start uh, with the, in this case with it, then we have to add an adjective. Mm. Okay. For example, if with the adjective uh, difficult. Okay, what can you say about this? We can say it's difficult to learn new topics. Okay, it's difficult to learn new topics. It's difficult to learn new topics. In this case, we are saying that learning topics, new topics is difficult. So we can say it's difficult to learn new topics. Okay, can you give me other example? Is it clear, Alicia? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, can you give me other example and then we continue? Benjamin, can you give me an example similar to this? Mm, yes, it's, it's very hard to, to swim in, 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 the, in the rain. In the... I, in, ¿Cómo se usa ese río? Mm. Which one? Rain. Okay, what do you want to say? Uh, río. Okay. Rio, we say river. Okay. It's, it's, hard. it's very hard to swim in the river. Okay, it's very hard to swim in the river. It's very hard to swim in the river. Okay, excellent. Here we're saying that swimming in the river is very hard. 
So it's very hard to swim in the river. Okay, excellent. There. So do you have any questions with this? No, it's okay. It's okay, Benjamin. Alejandra and Alicia? No. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, so let's uh, read a short conversation uh, to practice more about this. Okay, I'm going to start. Okay, here we have a conversation from lesson A from the topic Getting Ready. Okay, can you see the conversation? Yes. Okay, so here we have Alicia. The and we need, I need two people that help me reading this, this short conversation. Uh, Alicia, do you want to be Alicia? <laughs> okay. Okay, Alicia, and then I need uh, another person to be Rita. Who wants to be Rita? Uh, me? Okay, can I have you? Okay. Okay, so you can start reading this conversation, please. Yeah. Uh... So, are you all packed for your trip? Uh, no, I'm nowhere near ready. Look at my to-do list. I need to go shopping to get a suit suitcase, and I still have to go online to find a flight. Ooh, oh, so is it expensive to fly to Puerto Rico, or is it easy to find cheap flights? Well, it's not too hard to find a bargain. bargain. You, you, you just have to do some research. Right. So why are you going exactly? To see my, alter, my, my, my relatives in San Juan. Then we're all going someplace to go snor snorkeling. Nice. Sound like a fun trip. Good luck with your list. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much, um, Alicia and Javier. So, do you have any questions with vocabulary from this conversation? No? Okay, you a, a bargain. Okay, what is a bargain? Okay, when you're buying something, for example, uh, and you ask the, the seller, the salesperson, uh, to give you a nice price for that, uh, for that object. For example, you start talking to him about the price of the object, and you, and you try to convince the, that person to make kind of like a discount for you. Okay, in this case, it would be like regatear. Have you ever heard about this word? Yes. Okay. Any more questions? No. Okay, so here we have some examples using the structure that I mentioned. It's plus adjective plus two. Can you find some examples in this conversation? Okay, anyone can tell me uh, an example? Mm, is it expensive to fly to Puerto Rico? Okay, is it expensive to fly to Puerto Rico? It's, okay. It is easy to find. It is easy to find cheap flights. Okay. Here we have two sentences. Is it expensive to fly to Puerto Rico? But here we are uh, asking this in, as a question, okay? It, but it, it can also be the structure that we will learn. Is it expensive to fly to Puerto Rico? And then we have, is it, is, is it easy to find cheap flights? 
Okay, so if we want to uh, make this question in a positive sentence, how will it be? Here we are asking this as a question. Is it easy to find cheap flights? What we need to do in this case? Answer with yes, it or no, it's it is. Okay, we only need to uh, change it at the beginning. It's easy to find cheap flights. Okay, it's easy to find cheap flights. Uh, it's the same with the with this sentence. It's expensive to fly to Puerto Rico. But in a question is is. Is it expensive to fly to Puerto Rico? Okay, do you find any other sentences here? It's not too hard to find a bargain. Okay, it's not too hard to find a bargain. It's not too far, too hard to find a bargain. Okay, so let's continue then. Do you have any questions? No. Oh. Okay, so let's uh, talk about infinitives for reasons. Okay, here and uh, let me. Okay, what do we use infinitives for reasons of for purpose? Okay, we can use a uh, to plus infinitive to say what we. Uh, okay, to say what we do something. Okay, it tells the other person the reason we need to have a normal verb as well. Okay, here we have some examples using infinitives of purpose or for reasons. Okay, uh, Alicia, can you help me read in the first example, please? Yeah. Uh, I went on holiday. This is what it did to relax. This is why. I did it. Okay, I went on holiday to relax. Okay, so I went on holiday. This is what you do. I went on holiday to relax. And this is why you did. Okay, here we are um, mentioning that you went on holiday to relax. And to relax is the purpose of this action, okay? I went on holiday to relax. Okay, so we have the second example. Benjamin, can you hear me yeah. reading this? Yes, yes, she studies hard to get good marks. Okay, she studies hard to get good marks. Thank you. Okay, so in this case, what is the purpose of this sentence? To get. To get, okay, to get good marks, okay? okay. Thank you, Benjamin. And Alejandro, can you help me with the third sentence, please? Yes. He gave up cakes to lose weight. Okay. He gave up cakes to lose weight. What is the purpose of this sentence, Alejandro? To lose. To lose weight. Okay. Do you know this uh, expression, gave up? Uh, evitar. Evitar. Okay. In this case, it's in the past. Give up. Uh, give up is when you stop doing something. Okay. For example, he stopped eating cakes to lose weight. We can say. But in this case, it's a phrasal verb that we're using here. He gave up cakes to lose weight. But we can also say he stopped eating cakes to lose weight. That's the meaning of this expression. Okay, and finally, a good morning, Edgar, how are you? Very good, sir. Uh, I was late because today uh, I will start uh, well, travel to, to the office. Um, the office for my house is 
so 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 far. So the the traffic is terrible here in in the south of the city. So unfortunately, I, I didn't uh, uh, get on time for the class. So okay, don't worry, don't worry, that's okay. Thanks for telling me. Okay, we are uh, learning a new topic today uh, about uh, the topic it's called getting ready. Okay, so now we are reviewing or learning what do we use infinitives of corpus. Okay, so so far, do you have any questions? No, 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 okay. no I don't have it. We're just, okay, so can you hear me reading this example, please? Sure, uh, I'm calling you to ask for your help. Okay, I'm calling you to ask for your help. What is the infinitive of corpus in this sentence? To ask. Okay, to ask for your help. Thanks, Edgar. So, as you can see in these four sentences, uh, we have in infinitives for reasons or for purpose that uh, tell us uh, what is, why these people do, uh, okay? To relax, to get, to lose, to ask. Okay, so as you can see, the structure is uh, very similar two plus infinity. So first you have to mention why you did, or why do you do something, and then why you do that action, okay? I went on holiday to relax. She studies hard to get good marks. He gave up cakes to lose weight. I'm calling you to ask for your help. Okay, can you give me more examples uh, similar to this one? Uh, can you give me an example? Mm -hmm. Maybe um, relax. I, I I go to the to the forest in the weekend to relax. I go to where? I I go to the forest in, in on, okay. on, the week, on the weekend to to relax. Okay, I go to the forest on the weekend to relax. Okay, excellent. You go to relax in the forest. Excellent, come in. And Alicia, can you give me another example, please? Mm. <laughs> I I got I take vacation uh, to relax. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I take vacations to relax. Okay, okay, that's a good example. Okay, and Alejandro, can you give me another example, please? Okay, um, uh, we have uh, we're running out of time. Can you join to the same link again, please? Okay. Okay, and then we continue. Thank you so much. Okay, guys. So we were asking for examples uh, related to infinitive of purpose. So Alejandro, can you help me with this one? Give me an example. Uh, yes. We are still in English to learn more. Okay, that's a good example. We are telling this to learn more. Okay, thank you, Alejandro. And Edgar, can you give me an example uh, about this, please? I'm waiting you to uh, go to the party. Okay, I'm getting ready to get to the party. Okay, thank you, Edgar. So, so far, do you have any questions? No. Okay, excellent. So here we have um, how to formulate this, um, these structures for infinity for reasons. 
Okay, so here we have, you can use an infinitive to give a reason as we have been learning. Podemos utilizar los infinitivos para explicar o para dar razones de algo. For example, here we have this question. Where are you going to Puerto Rico? ¿Por qué vas a Puerto Rico? And then we have some reasons uh, to explain this. Okay, we have to see my relatives. I'm going to Puerto Rico to see my relatives. I need, okay, estoy yendo a Puerto Rico para ver a mis parientes, okay, to see my relatives. I need to go shopping to get a suitcase. Necesito ir de compras para comprar, en este caso, a mal una maleta. O I have to go online to find a flight. Necesito conectarme a internet para conseguir un vuelo. Okay. Uh, como pueden ver en estas oraciones, aquí estamos utilizando los infinitivos. En este caso, to see, to get, to find, para explicar por qué estamos haciendo ciertas cosas. Okay. En este caso, uh, en la primera oración, estoy yendo a Puerto Rico. ¿Por qué estoy yendo a Puerto Rico? En este caso, para visitar o para ver a mis parientes. To see my relatives. Okay. En, en lo mismo con la siguiente oración. ¿Por qué estoy yendo de compras? Estoy yendo de compras porque necesito conseguir una maleta. Y con la última oración es muy similar. I have to go online. ¿Por qué me tengo que conectar al internet? Para conseguir un vuelo. Okay. Como pueden ver, eh, de esto trata los infinitives for reasons. Los infinitives for reasons tratan de explicar por qué estamos haciendo ciertas cosas. Ok, eh, como estábamos viendo, eh, the structure, you can use its plus adjective plus to to describe a verb. Ok, podemos utilizar la estructura its más el adjetivo más to para describir un verbo. Por ejemplo, is it expensive to fly? Una pregunta. Primero va el, el auxiliar en este caso que es is, luego el pronombre en este caso it okay, o el verbo. Por ejemplo, is it cheap fly online? Es muy fácil de encontrar un vuelo en línea. Ok, luego tenemos it's is it easy to find bargains online? It's easy to do, it's not hard to do. Okay. Aquí estamos utilizando algunos adjetivos en este caso para describir los verbos. Eh, Expensive, que es caro, to fly. Aquí estamos diciendo que volar, to fly, es caro. Estamos diciendo que encontrar, to find, es fácil. Okay. Luego aquí estamos diciendo to do, hacer, es fácil. Y hacer, to do, eh, no es tan difícil. Okay. Solo estamos utilizando los adjetivos para describir las acciones. Okay. Y aquí tenemos una parte que nos dice the top five adjectives in the structure. It's plus adjective plus two are hard, nice, easy, good, and important. Okay. Los adjetivos más comunes que se utilizan en la estructura it's plus adjective plus two son hard, difícil, nice, tranquilo o calmado, easy, fácil, Good, bueno, and important, important. Okay, uh, do you have any questions with this? No. No. Okay. So we only have uh, six minutes left before we finish with this lesson. So I think we have time to learn some words. Okay. Do you remember? What words we learned in our previous lesson? Any words you remember? You remember? For example, knocking. Okay, can you repeat it, please? Uh, the last class you told that you teach us um, the the word nagging that it's similar to grumpy. Okay, nagging. Okay, I remember that. Thanks, nagging. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, okay, thank you. Okay, do you want to say something? Okay, okay, excellent. 
Okay. Do you remember any other word? Argue and um, discussion. Okay, argue and discussion. Get a get on get on well. Como llevarse bien. Get on well, llevarse bien. Excellent. Okay, Alicia, do you remember any other words? No, I don't remember. Sorry. Okay, don't worry, don't worry. Alejandro, you weren't able to attend the last class, right? No. Okay, so in the last class, we were learning some vocabulary related to, to traveling or to neighborhood in this case. Uh, and we learned some expression, for example, as Benjamin mentioned, to get on well. Let me write it in the chat. To get on well, que era llevarse bien. Um, as Edgar mentioned, we also learned the word nagging, que es igual a grumpy. Okay, do you know this word, uh, Alejandro? Grumpy? Grumpy? Uh, I think I hear. Okay, you're like the, uh, okay, angry person. Or? Okay, like that's it, like an angry person. Okay, it's a person who's always complaining about everything. Okay, who's always angry, who always is in a bad mood. Okay, then we learned uh, the words. Argue and discussion. Can anyone tell me the difference between these two words, please? Or do you know the difference between argue and discussion? I think yes. argue is when you say some points. Okay. And discussion, it's more like uh, you say something and the other person answers and you answer again and again, okay. again, again. Okay, and this question, what do you think? It's this question. Uh, that part, when you are talking with an, another person and you answer and the other person answer too. Okay, excellent. Alex, okay. There is a difference between these two words. In the previous lesson, we mentioned that there is a difference. For example, argue means also talking to someone else, as Alejandro mentioned. The, the person says something, and the other person says something, but uh, in a bad way. Okay, for example, in este caso, significa discutir o pelear con alguien, okay? To say bad words. In this question, mm -hmm. in español, we have, uh, solemos decir discutir en español. Pero si decimos discutir en español, estamos refiriéndonos a que alguien está peleando con otra persona, okay? But in English, when we say discussion, means that someone is talking in a good way to someone else, okay? So there is a difference. Argue is more like discutir. And discussion is como hablar tranquilamente, okay? Any questions? No. No. Okay, Edgar and Benjamin? No, no thank you. Okay, so... We're gonna leave these parts to learn in the next lesson, these six words, because we are, it's already 9.30. So it, if you don't have any more questions, that will be it for today. And I'll see you on Thursday. Is that okay? Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, teacher. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you so much for being here today. Have a nice day. You too, thank you so much.
Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.